You know, if you're the Arizona Cardinals or any organization and you trade up to take a quarterback in the top 10 to then a year later dump him basically for a second round pick so you can then take a different quarterback with the number one overall pick and then go out there and hire a new head coach after the head coach you just had that coached that quarterback that you took in the top 10 traded up to get, got fired because he sucked. Then you go out there and you go into the coaching market and you hire a guy that's available, but not available because maybe he took a year off, not available because he was a coordinator for an NFL team, wasn't a guy with former NFL head coaching experience. You go out into the college market and you say, you know, these different successful college head coaches that are winning conference titles, contending for national championships. Nah, we want Cliff Kingsbury. Ooh, if you're going to do that, this shit better work. And so far through two years, can you really say this has worked all that well? It hasn't been a total raging dumpster fire or anything, but they fell apart late in the year and, you know, you didn't really see a ton of development out of Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury at times looked like he was getting outclassed and outcoached. And this was a team that should have made the playoffs easily as a seventh seed. And they didn't. So now where the hell are you at? You're in year three of Kyler Murray. You know, certainly not a bust or a scrub, but it's more like the conversation with him is, you see some of the athletic talent, but what's the progression as a passer? Like just what is his overall upside as a passer and as a quarterback as a result? And you're starting to get to a place where you got to make a decision on him in terms of what well, you're going to try and give him a long-term extension. And you look at Cliff Kingsbury, your coach, you're in year three. Like, it has not been a raging success. That's for damn sure. And you wonder, like, how much longer they're going to go with this guy. So, a pivotal kind of season for the Arizona Cardinals, admittedly. It really is. So I can understand why they went into the free agent market, went a little older veteran heavy, bringing in guys like J.J. Watt and A.J. Green, um, bringing in a James Conner, obviously a younger player. But, um, you know, J.J. Watt is a future Hall of Famer. So you're bringing him in, trying to get the last couple of good years out of him, although that's still going to seem weird seeing him in a Cardinals jersey. A.J. Green, you know, to me, likely a Hall of Famer someday. Um, you're trying to squeeze the last little bit that you can out of him to give yourself a better number two option opposite DeAndre Hopkins, which is specifically more important if Larry Fitzgerald indeed isn't going to come back and play in 2021. Um, but then you look and you say, even with those offseason moves, did they really get better? Like, you let Hassan Reddick go, former first-round pick. Patrick Peterson, you know, maybe a little long in the tooth, but he's no less long in the tooth than a J.J. Watt is. You let Patrick Peterson go. So now you create potentially more questions in your secondary. You let Kenyon Drake go. So is James Conner really an upgrade over Kenyon Drake? I don't know. And then it was really weird to me for the Cardinals when you look at their draft approach. You took Isaiah Simmons last year, who was more athlete than clearly defined position player on defense and have to figure out how to utilize him. And then you come back and take another kind of defensive athlete in Zayvon Collins. Uh, you took him in about the right place. Like, he can make some sense. Could be exciting to think about the future of those two guys in the middle area of that defense. But how is that helping Kyler Murray develop? How is that helping your offense that needed some help, frankly, last year? It's not. That's odd. Now you could say arguing drafting a Rondell Moore in round two is going to help, and it might. You know, Rondell Moore is one of those guys that you know, he's a walking injury waiting to happen, but when he's healthy, there's no question he can have an impact. It's how do you manufacture opportunities and touches for him to get the ball in his hands? Like how often can you utilize him? So you could look at him and you say he's not the typical second round pick as a receiver, um, but. Are you hanging your hat on that to him to be that much of an impact player, that much of a difference maker? I don't think so. Well, again, I could be crazy. Well, some of you will say I surely am. But nonetheless, um, if I look at this team, I still like their running game. 
you know, with guys like Connor and Edmonds and especially Kyler Murray when you factor him into the mix because he's a guy, you know, that in terms of NFL quarterbacks, he's in kind of that elite category, probably top five as a runner and a scrambler. Um, so this is a team that should definitely be able to run the ball this season. Their pass rush, you're bringing back in a Chandler Jones who missed a good portion of 2020. Um, J.J. Watt may still have something left in the tank, maybe get a little more out of Marcus Golden this upcoming year. Like, this is a team that I should expect to be able to still generate some type of pass rush with their front seven. Uh, how much remains to be seen. You've got Nuke, you've got DeAndre Hopkins on the outside, so you've got a clear-cut number one wide receiver, a clear-cut elite talent to pair with your young quarterback. So if Kyler Murray doesn't end up panning out the way you quite hoped in Arizona, you can't blame DeAndre Hopkins, because at least you gave him somebody that had stud factor to him. But still, plenty of questions here. The run defense for this team was not great last year, and I don't see in the offseason where it got a whole lot better. Moreover, I think the two biggest question marks to me on this team are on the offensive side of the ball. One is Kyler Murray, the passer, and the other is Cliff Kingsbury, the coach in the system. Like if you look at Kingsbury, what have you seen out of him that has helped, really helped Kyler Murray to develop over the past two years? You really haven't seen it. And I'm sorry, but if you tell me you've seen a ton of development, that's like you're making it up at this point. Any development there's been as a passer has been incremental and not nearly sizable or significant or consistent enough. And you, you maybe you start to wonder like, oh, maybe there's a reason why he failed ultimately at the college level. And, and Kyler Murray, again, like this is a dude that you took number one overall. It's kind of similar to the Baker Mayfield thing for the Cleveland Browns. You're not saying a guy's a bust. You're not saying he's booty cheeks or anything like that. Baker's not booty. Kyler's not booty, but when you take a quarterback number one overall, you're expecting to get an elite type of guy. You want to leave no doubt that this can be that dude. You want to leave no doubt that he is the face of the franchise for the better. Baker's like an average to slightly above average starting quarterback right now through three years. Kyler Murray is an average to maybe slightly, slightly above average NFL starting quarterback. I know you're only two years at, in with Kyler, but you probably admittedly want to see more development out of a guy that was taken number one overall, is what I'm saying here. Um, as I look at this schedule, you've got a couple of key stretches that I look at here. Weeks four through six, you know, a few tough games on the slate going to Los Angeles to take on the Rams, then coming back home to take on San Francisco, and then going to Cleveland to take on the Browns. If they want any chance at being in the mix and that meat grinder of a division, that's the NFC West, they're going to have to find a way to at least win one of those games, preferably against one of the divisional opponents, but really likely probably need to win two of them, but certainly one for sure. And then as you look kind of like at the last six weeks of the season, there may be some opportunities here to get some wins, but then you also look at it and say it's not that easy. Like having to travel up to December, Chicago in December, and especially you assume at that point, maybe there's a Justin Fields playing for the Bears. Unless Matt Navy's being really stubborn or stupid or something else has gone tragically wrong, then you know that Bears game is no gimme at that point. The Rams, you got them at home and you play them tough, but you know that's tough. Got to go to Detroit. Who the fuck knows what Dan Campbell's going to do? He might just kick out everybody's knee from under their knee. Yes, Owen Hart reference worked in. Uh, Indianapolis at Dallas, Seattle. Yeah, schedule's not easy. <laughs> there are other winnable games in here, but I look at this division and I say, okay, in terms of coaching, I'll take Sean McVay. I'll take Pete Carroll. I'll take Kyle Shanahan. So the Cardinals have the worst coach in their division. Then I look at the quarterback and I say, okay, I'm going to take Russell Wilson over him. Yes. I'm going to take Matthew Stafford over him. Yes. So at best, the Cardinals have the third best quarterback in the division. At best. Worst head coach, third best quarterback, not a great combination. Might argue potentially the second worst, so the when you think about best defenses, they're probably third. Maybe they're above Seattle, but that's it. The Rams and the 49ers certainly are better defensive units. 
offensively. You know, you get what I'm saying? Like, as I keep looking at this, last year I was a little bit more bullish on this team. And I thought like, hey, this is a team that could finish second in that division. Here's a team that could do something. Maybe I'm course correcting here when I shouldn't be, but I don't have as much confidence in them this year. I think this is a team that's going to struggle some. I think this is a team that sees their head coach get fired potentially even before the season ends. I just don't have a lot of faith in Cliff Kingsbury, and I don't have a ton of faith right now based off of what I've seen the first two years to see a ton of development and growth out of Kyler Murray. So I think this is more of like a six-win team, and they're going to finish last in the NFC West. Sorry.